this episode of the I Hate Matt Ball Poetry Podcast, where today it's obviously Christmas. Well, not today it's Christmas, but it's Christmas time. And I didn't know what pod... I, I went and recorded a bunch of crap because I knew I was going to have people in and out of the house for the next few weeks. So I recorded a bunch of shit. And then I'm looking at the podcast episode I'm going to put out on Christmas Eve and it's this fucking horrific tale of depression and suicide and poetry (laughs) so I'm like oh shit am I really going to do this and then I thought you know what there are more suicides around Christmas than there are any other time of the year probably In between Thanksgiving and Christmas, I would suspect. So, um, fuck it. We'll put this out and see if it fucking helps anybody feel better. Uh, So, with that said, let me fucking get into the fucking motherfucking shoutouts. Okay? Because I should do that, and I don't have any of the stuff with me here. So, again, if you get in my Patreon, or if you go on YouTube and sign up for the Thank You Crew um, so you can see the video of this podcast, or if you sign up for the fucking Anarchy Crew so you can get over a hundred videos of lessons and workshops with yours truly, or if you sign up for the Chapbook of the Month Club, which is fucking the Anarchy Crew, the Thank You Crew, plus all of my stuff. Like this chapbook here, MacArthur Park. And in the back of it, you will see that y'all get thanked. Okay? So, I want to give a big thank you to Michael, to Deborah, to Cedar, to Harry over on Patreon. Thank you so much for your support. Also, oh, and fucking Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays and whatever you celebrate. Also, I want to give a thank you to Patrick, to JH, and to Britt. Thank you guys, and I hope you guys have a great holiday, too. Oh, also, I want to say um, happy holidays to Alan and AM. I appreciate you guys, and can't wait for you to come back. And then over on the Anarchy Crew, I want to give a big thank you to Bunny, to Nate, to Mindy, to Thomas, to Tim, to Lisa, to Josh, to Jessica, to Shaylin, to Caitlin, to... And also... A big fucking thank you to the number one chappie, the SDG. Thank you so much. And I hope you guys all have a happy holiday. And I hope this podcast episode is not too depressing for you guys. Because this is a tale of victory over depression. So, that's some good shit, right? Oh shit, yeah, I forgot to say... Um, that thing you guys are going to get me for Christmas, five stars on iTunes, I'll, I'll take that gift now. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, that would, that would be awesome. That'd be awesome. Um, also, um, run over to Etsy and pick up MacArthur Park, December's chapbook, and all the other chapbooks I got over there. Why the hell not? indulge yourself it's the holidays folks so with all that said let's get right into the suicide because um that that'll make all this a lot easier probably so on with the snow hello everybody and welcome to this episode of the i hate matt wall poetry podcast where today I'm going to talk about depression, and I'm going to talk about how poetry saved my life. There should be, I'm kind of running low on time here, so I'm just going to get right into it. I have talked about this before, like this first part, about how poetry saved my life. So, like, especially those in the Anarchy Crew, you guys have heard this story a hundred fucking times, and I apologize. But what's going to happen after that is I'm going to tell you the next chapter in that fucking story, okay? Back in 2019, um, I kind of gave up everything and moved out to the desert. 
as like a last ditch effort to help my anxiety and get me away from people, get me out in the middle of fucking nowhere. And I was trying to build an off grid homestead. That was the plan. And I was there with my wife at the time and my kid was there some of the time, but my kid wanted to go um, to school back up the mountain. So my kid moved out and moved in with um, a friend so they could finish school. And so there was a bit of empty nesting there. There was a bit of me trying really fucking hard to make this fucking homestead thing work. And it was really fucking difficult. I'm sure there are two sides to every coin, you know? And I feel like I just talked about this somewhere. Um, It might have been on a live stream. But whenever you do something big, like a big life-changing event, even if you and your partner agree on what that thing is, that's not enough. You guys have to agree on the process in which that will take place. So with us, we both wanted to build a homestead out in the desert. Earth bag homes, the whole fucking thing. Completely off grid, solar, well water, um, uh, rain water harvesting, growing our food, the whole fucking thing. Chickens, eggs, you know, Bob's your uncle. So we all agreed on this, but then when we got there and we started planning out how we were going to divide the five acres, how we were going to build the houses, where the houses were going to be on the property, um, what plants we were going to grow, like what food we were going to grow, what animals we were going to raise, suddenly we couldn't fucking agree on anything. So being out in the desert in 120 plus degrees, living in a trailer that made it 10 degrees hotter than it was outside, having the elements destroy everything I fucking own, all of these things on top of me now empty nesting with my kid leaving, all of these things, my depression, my anxiety, the holidays approaching. And as we got closer to um, Thanksgiving, Um, I pretty much fucking lost it. And I thought I was going to die by my own hand. It was very heavy. And I don't mean to make this super heavy, but I'm really fucking hoping that I could help somebody. Like, even if just one person puts the fucking razor down, like, through this, you know, whatever. I ended up um, writing poetry again after taking about, I don't know, like nine months off of writing poetry like i was just focused on the homestead and i was still doing like weird mask and at that time weird mask almost ran itself i feel like i was dropping the ball on editorial duties on it but for the most part it was still doing its thing and then my printer died because desert then i didn't have that anymore and so everything was fucked And I was just drinking a bunch because I didn't know what else to do. I was in a lot of pain, both physically and emotionally. I really didn't know what the fuck was going to happen. So one night while I was sitting there, I had my computer out and I'm like, I'm just going to start fucking writing. And I started writing what would become the end of everything. And I started writing this. It was after Thanksgiving, because Thanksgiving I had a bit of a breakdown. And then the closer to Christmas we got, the more severe I was getting worried. And so this book is about me dealing with my depression, dealing with my medical insurance, trying to get help through therapists and psychologists and psychiatrists, realizing that I probably needed to go on medication, which was the last thing in the world I fucking wanted. And so again, a lot of you know this story because I talk about it a lot. So I fucking wrote a shit ton of poems, and then the poems that are basically about this ended up in here. 
I decided I would do a crowdfunding campaign to put this book together, to get copies of it, to number the copies, sign them, do the whole fucking thing. And so I told everyone, you know, the end of everything is coming, you know, get ready for it. The Kickstarter or Indiegogo is going to start on this day. I think it might have been my birthday it started, or I don't know, or the 19th of March or something like that. But do you know what happened that day? The day that my campaign started? Do you know what happened? If you don't remember, back in 2020, in March? Um, the world shut down and was on lockdown. While I am trying to raise money for a book called The End of Everything with a fucking mushroom cloud on the cover. Okay? Not a brilliant piece of timing there. So I didn't know how serious this whole thing was going to be. So then I added a tier in the fucking um, end of everything thing um, called the coronavirus special where you get um, a PDF because I wasn't going to do ebooks. I was just going to do paperbacks. And so I did um, an ebook version for like, I think it was a dollar or five dollars or something. And anyway, so I tried to do this book, try to do the whole fucking thing. I didn't meet the goal, but I had enough to get more than enough copies for everyone who put money into it. And that was good enough for me. The book is a bit smaller than I originally wanted it to be. It's like a hundred and how many pages is it? Oh, it's a hundred pages. Oh, and there's a picture of me at the oven in the kitchen of my trailer with my ashtray on the stove and my glass of wine on the counter and I'm sitting on an ottoman and my computer's on a fucking stool and that was me every night you know just fucking slamming these salamis on the fucking keys because I didn't raise enough money that I wanted to the book's only 100 pages so fine whatever and I got 125 copies and then, like, it took probably another six months to um, get the book formatted properly, get the covers done, figure out how much money I actually had to play with to do the book in the first place, the whole fucking thing, and then get them shipped to me, sign them, number them, ship them out to everybody. So by this time, I am on different types of medication. They keep trying to give me a cocktail that will work, Okay up and down the card, you know? Because my biggest thing is, is that when I have been on antidepressants in the past, I have not wanted to create, I have not wanted to do anything. But I got to the point where if I didn't do something, I don't know if I was going to live. So they needed to give me fucking happy pills, whether or not it killed my creativity or not. And I just had to fucking deal with it. And that was like seriously one of the hardest fucking things in the world for me to be okay with, honestly. This chapbook was the first chapbook I made after the end of everything came out. And this is called um, Pharma Phoenix Rises. And I did the cover. It's like a phoenix rising out of a capsule that says 120 milligrams. And this chapbook is about me finding the right dose, the right cocktail, the right mixture of antidepressants and anti-anxiety medication to help me be able to create and have it not be a fucking issue. That I could still be on medication and still create. This is now out of print, but... How many of these I make? 50? Yeah, I made 50 of these. So that's what this book's about. And when that book came out, I got a lot of shit. And I couldn't fucking believe it. Because I am a guy who made a movie called Vaginal Holocaust. And I'm getting in trouble for writing a fucking book of poetry about the joys of antidepressants. And that made some people mad. Some of my friends gave me shit for it. Some of my family gave me shit for it. And then I even got some shit from people I didn't know on fucking YouTube when I was making videos about it and talking about it. And that really fucked me up because I'm like, dude, what fucking century do we live in where mental health is fucking frowned upon? This is fucking stupid. Like, what the fuck is happening? And the big fucking argument was, 
was that I'm taking mind altering chemicals. And that's why this book is phony. And I'm like, dude, I have been writing drunk for fucking years. And none of you have said a fucking thing about it. What the fuck are you talking about? So long story short, through moves and all this other shit, because I've now moved twice and I'm looking at moving a third time since being out in the desert. Um, I am no longer on medication. And a lot of it is due to the fact that I keep having to change my insurance every time I move because wherever I move to, there aren't any providers for me there. And um, just getting back in the system and then having to go through those intake sessions so the person could figure out what the best thing to fucking... Blah, 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 blah. It's, it's too much. And when you come off of stuff like that, you get these things. I don't know if they're actually called this, but this is what I call them. I call them brain zaps where like you're like you just have these jolts of electricity in your brain and it's fucking terrifying and um i don't like it so because i don't like it i'm not gonna fucking put up with that shit so it's not making me want to run back to get medication because if anything happens to me like it's happening right now where i'm going to have to move again i don't want to go through this fucking thing where i lose my fucking medication so I haven't been on anything. Now we get to the new part of the story. I, the last few weeks, have gone through kind of a lot of personal and health situations, okay? So much so that I have been kind of back and I took a week away from all of this shit to try to fucking get my head on straight. But that week was a very hard time Hard to the point where I didn't go into the fucking kitchen because there was an X-Acto knife on the table for me doing a fucking project. And, like, I was so fucked up. I'm like, oh, my God, if I go near that fucking X-Acto knife, like, I might pick it up. I don't want to fucking go in there. Don't want to fucking do that. That kind of shit. It was that fucking bad. Okay? I ended up giving myself some tattoos during that time. Um, probably for the like the pain exhilaration or whatever but um you know like you do what you got to do i guess oh my god that squirrel is taking a shit on a fucking telephone wire i have never seen that before maybe that's telling me something about this episode thanks squirrel you fucking asshole so what i ended up doing was going on a blitzkrieg string of writing because i was at that place again where I wasn't sure each day if I was going to be able to make it through the day. And a friend of mine was like, you got to get out of this house. You got to go outside. And I'm like, if I fucking go outside, I might throw myself in front of fucking the next city bus that comes by. Like, at least in here, I know where all the danger is. And nothing's going to, like, entice me. You know what I'm saying? It's difficult when you have these fucking feelings of fucking just self-destructive. I'll say self-destructive because at the same time I was like, I could go out and start punching fucking windshields or find some fucking homeless guy that looks at me funny. And I might go, well, here it is. Let's get into a fight with a bum and see what happens. You know, like I just wanted to fucking feel something that wasn't what I was feeling. You know what I'm saying? So I fucking went on this tear and fucking was writing poem after poem after poem after poem after poem, like as quickly as I fucking could, getting every horrible idea out of my head. Just getting all of these negative thoughts, all of this horrible shit out of me and away from me so I could fucking continue on. And that was really fucking helpful. Like, I think if I didn't have that, I don't know what the fuck I would have done. Like, I don't know if I would have killed myself or anything like that, but I sure as hell would have fucking maimed the shit out of myself or ended up in fucking jail. Like, I don't know. And th it's so funny because, like, a lot of people would go like, you know, but, like, why would you do this if, like, everything else in your life is going good? None of that shit matters. None of this matters when you feel like that. 
when you are down that fucking low, everything could be going great and it doesn't fucking matter. So at the end of the day, I wrote a ton of stuff and um, I don't know if I'm ever going to put that stuff out because the difference between the stuff I've written recently compared to the end of everything, the poems in the end of everything were very much me reaching out for help, whereas the poems I wrote over the last like few weeks have been... Um, horrific and terrifying like I'll just say that like I would be committed if people read the poems that I wrote over the last couple weeks so we'll see how that goes maybe I'll put them out sometime or maybe it'll be that awesome collection that comes out after my untimely death but yeah you just gotta work through those things you know um, depression is a real fucking thing um, mania is a real fucking thing anxiety is a real fucking thing and it could take a fucking toll on you if you're not careful. So if you ever feel that way, just get all of it on paper. Get it out of your body, out of your soul. Vomit on the fucking paper. Do not cut yourself. Do not hurt yourself. Bleed fucking um, figurative blood on the paper. Do not, do not bleed real blood on the paper. Okay? So... This was um, very heavy, but yeah, so um, I will have an outro here now, I guess. So everyone, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that like moved you in some way. I hope that helped you in some way, or at least gave you some tools to put in your toolbox if you ever feel that way. And so for the butt plugs today, all I'm going to say is I hope you guys all have a great holiday, that Christmas is what you want it to be, Hanukkah is what you want it to be, Kawans is what you want it to be, whatever it is you celebrate. And I really, really hope that if you've never written before, if you've never tried your hand at poetry, if you never tried your hand at short stories, but you always wanted to, I hope that this Christmas is the last Christmas that you ever have to say, man, wouldn't it be great someday if, you know, that's all gone. You're going to fucking do the shit now. Okay. So here is to a lovely 2022. It was really a great year. It really, really was. But 2023 is right around the corner. And honestly, it's already going to fucking top this year by leaps and bounds. The things that I got planned is going to make your fucking head spin, everybody. So um, just go over to IHateMountWall.com. If you need anything from me, drop me a line at IHateMountWall.gmail.com. But honestly, I just hope you guys have a great holiday. And um, there will be another episode for you on Wednesday. So until next time, everybody, I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.